Sainsbury's three-month courtship of home retail group is over. A takeover agreement has been reached in a deal that values home retail at roughly £1.3 billion. But why was one of the UK's biggest supermarket groups so keen to buy a non-food retail business? Like all supermarkets, Sainsbury's faces increased competition from the discount retailers such as Aldi and Lidl, who've been able to capture nearly 10% of the UK grocery market. Online competition is the other big strategic challenge. The established grocers already have a web-only rival in Ocado. Now Amazon is getting in on the act as well. It already delivers groceries in some parts of the UK and plans to ramp up that part of its business this year. All that has led Sainsbury's to home retail and its catalogue retailing business, Argos. Sainsbury's wants to put Argos outlets in its stores. It's betting it can sell groceries to Argos customers as they pick up goods they ordered online and at the same time get Sainsbury's shoppers to grab a new mobile phone or coffee table along with their groceries. But is there enough customer overlap for this to work? 40% of British adults shopped uh, in an Argos and in a Sainsbury's at least once in the past year. That's the figure that Sainsbury's has been keen to put out there. Now, whether that really means that there's a great overlap in, um, in the customer base is a point of contention. You know, I mean, um, I heard one analyst say he'd been inside a cathedral and a mosque at least once in the past year. So, so who knows? Um, what Sainsbury says is if you go into Sainsbury's stores and you ask customers, they all think it makes sense. No one turns their nose up and says, I don't want an Argos in my Sainsbury's, I wouldn't shop there. Um, according to the company, uh, the customers are very positive about the idea. Argos customers and Sainsbury's customers aren't always natural overlaps. But I do think, it, you know, when I go into Waitrose and buy my, you know, herbs, if I were then thinking, oh, I need pet food, I might get it. So I, I do think. Cross-selling is not a bad idea. In the U.S., for example, Target is famous for its cross-selling. You can go in for anything and you'll always end up spending $100 because there's always a couple of other things and some great jeans and while I'm here, why don't I buy an egg beater? And so in theory, it could be a great idea. Sainsbury's move into cross-selling reflects the growing pressure on its existing retail space from online competitors. That's according to the retail analyst Tony Charette. He reckons Sainsbury's move for home retail smacks of desperation. One of the reasons why Sainsbury is doing this is to try and uh, anticipate the fact that a lot of its in-store sales will go to the internet and so what do we replace them with? So you're trying to make your existing space more efficient, I think. Um, the evidence uh, to support um, you know, the success of that as a strategy uh, I think is quite mixed. Uh, if you take Marks & Spencer, which is a, you know, a, an established cross-selling type of organisation, um, they've had quite a few problems. In theory, it's the right sort of thing to do, um, but in practice, in this particular case, it, it, is it the right retailer to try and cross-sell into? Richard Marwood's a fund manager at AXA who holds both Sainsbury's and home retail shares. He says there are some execution risks, but he's cautiously optimistic about the deal. Well, I think one of the things for Sainsbury's has been that it's maybe been a little bit further behind the other supermarkets in terms of its general offering. So maybe having Argos does give a way to improve that, that general merchandise offering uh, and also it does give them access to the stores as well and, and crucially their logistics network and there's a, you know, a lot of talk about can they use the Argos network for click and collect. Sainsbury's reckons if this deal goes through they'll be making £120 million a year more profit three years hence than they could have managed without Argos. Um, and about half of that comes from um, setting up concessions inside supermarkets and closing down some of the old Argos stores that are right nearby an existing Sainsbury's. The rest comes from firing people in head office and maybe starting a new clothing line. Um, now, if that all comes off, if they really do manage to make 120 million extra a year in profit, then that's going to make this deal uh, look really quite cheap at the price they've agreed. The question is whether they'll manage it. And judging by the, the share price movements today, it looks like a lot of people in the city think they can't. Sainsbury's declined to comment in this video. But Mike Coop, Sainsbury's chief executive, says the takeover will give the company a non-food business to rival John Lewis or Amazon but some analysts are sceptical about the business case behind the deal. It just looks very speculative. Um, Argos uh, is a, um, a weak uh, player in the um, non-food markets and it's just issued two profits warnings. It's not obvious uh, why um, Sainsbury's would think that this is a sort of strong, sustain sustainable long-term business. 
between Amazon coming in and the, the discounters like Aldi and Little coming in and pulling off some of their customers, they need to figure out a way to, to attract people to their stores and to their website. And so I, I think, yes, it, I don't know if it's desperation. It's either incredibly clever and like a wonderful, what we would call in the U.S. a Hail Mary pass, where you take this big gamble and it pays off, or it's, a, or it's desperation. I think that's the, it, it's hard to know which one it is. It's one or the other. Sainsbury's says adding a non-food retail business will provide synergies and boost its customer base. Critics continue to question whether this was the right business for Sainsbury's to buy. Daniel Garahan, Financial Times, London.